All righty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Today we're going to be talking about building light rail in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, when I moved there in 2013, I didn't really drive a car, but from 2014 to 2019 when I lived in Knoxville, every year I noticed the traffic was getting worse and worse. There's really not an alternative mode of transit to get around the city, particularly on game days, but also just Monday through Friday, getting in and out of downtown is, is difficult. You're gonna be sitting in traffic for an extra 15 minutes because it's more and more clogged. Uh, you got people moving in from out of state. It's just becoming more and more populated and they can't continue to expand the roads. The solution, in my opinion, is build light rail. Now you're wondering, well, why should we do that? That's more expensive than building a road. But uh, <laughs> the rail lines already exist. So we're gonna be talking about that in this video. First, let's talk a little bit about the inspiration for this video. I've talked with a few people about it uh, back when I lived in Knoxville. You know, they, they kept pushing this idea of light rail. One year I was coming back from hood to coast in Oregon and I had flown back from Seattle to Nashville. A buddy of mine who happens to own a running store and I, he and I were discussing well, wouldn't it be nice if you had high-speed rail you know, go, to go from Nashville to Knoxville? He's like, yeah, but the only problem is when you got to Knoxville, you know, you couldn't really get anywhere because you know, there's not a lot of good transportation options. And he said, you know, what if we built light rail instead? Because that way, at least you could get around the city without a car. And having been in Seattle without a car and being able to navigate that city uh, using solely public transit, it was really nice. And I thought, you know, maybe it's a better, uh, better use of taxpayer dollars to start with light rail in individual cities and build that out before you talk about high-speed rail between cities. On top of that, another individual, he floated the idea too of light rail uh, going from Oak Ridge to West Knoxville to downtown Knoxville all the way to like Sevierville, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge area. Uh, now that, that'd be a stretch, but I think it would serve a good deal of the population. Both of those people had great ideas, and I thought, hmm, well, why hadn't somebody looked into this? Well, as fate would have it, somebody had. His name is Joe Holtquist, and he proposed starting in World's Fair Park and building your terminal station there, and building the rail south towards Tyson McGeehee Airport all the way to Maryville, with intermittent stops along the way. This idea was proposed in 2018, and since I haven't heard or seen anything online, I agree with the idea of building light rail, but there is a lot of pushback uh, from a lot of people and I think a lot of folks in Tennessee are just foreign uh, to trains completely. As an example, the chairman of the Knoxville Airport Authority, Eddie Manis, said that he just didn't see the demand for rail when there were two million passengers flying through Tyson McGeehee Airport. I think that's insane. I think Tennesseans would rather pay five dollars for a train ticket and park for free five miles out, it's a shorter drive, take the train into the airport, and instead of having to pay $9 a day for parking. It's a no-brainer. Nonetheless, the proposal didn't pass and there hasn't been anything since. While I think Joe Holquist's idea was a good idea, I think taxpayer dollars could be better utilized building rail within Knoxville itself. Building all the way to Maryville and into rural parts of Knox County and Blount County, I think is a little bit more difficult. Taxpayer dollars, could be better utilized starting downtown Knoxville, not in World's Fair Park, but over Gay Street by Jackson Avenue. You have tons of railroad tracks. It just lends itself to building a passenger station there. From there, you could take the tracks west instead of south. You could put a station by Earth Fair and Kroger's. That way, people living downtown could easily access grocery stores and Bearden, which is a mini downtown, and do it all without usage of a car. More to that point, too, on game days, people could park in Bearden, take the train into downtown, and avoid paying $50, $60, $70 for parking that day in Fort Sanders. That train could further be extended from Bearden all the way further west to like Morrell Road, almost to West Town Mall. So people commuting in from West Knoxville wouldn't be stuck in a traffic jam on I-40 at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. In addition to that, they wouldn't have to pay for parking in the parking garage. They could park off of Morrell Road for free, take the train all the way in in about 15 minutes, which is about how long it takes to drive, and then from there, uh, save money and save time. So the biggest counter argument against trains is the fact that you have to use eminent domain to buy property so that you can put your tracks down. 
The benefit here is the infrastructure already exists. The tracks already run from Gay Street and Jackson Avenue out west to Bearden. There's no money spent on tracks. There's no more money spent on buying property to lay tracks. It already exists. Granted, some of the sections of track are going to be single track, which means you could only go one way in, one way out. So you couldn't have trains going opposite directions at the same time. But if given an appropriate schedule, I think this could be a massive benefit to Knoxville. Once the Jackson Avenue station was put up, the Bearden station was put up, from there you could also run tracks south towards Maryville like Joe Holtquist was talking about. And that way you would have a central point you know, that could go multiple directions. So the big question is, how much does this cost? So how do we do a fair cost analysis? I think really there's two ways to do it. The first of which involves looking at the cost per mile of similar commuter rail projects that retrofit freight rail to commuter rail. The range in the cost per mile of these projects vary greatly. On the upper end, you have the Seattle Sounder, which costs a whopping $26 million per mile to build. On the other end of that spectrum, and I think a more fair price range, is the Music City Star in Nashville. It cost $42 million to complete back in 2006. There were 31 miles of track that were laid, which means that it comes out to roughly $1.3 million per mile in 2006. When you adjust for inflation in 2022 dollars, that comes out to $1.91 million per mile. Assuming that we're building eight miles of track from downtown to West Town Mall, it'll be about eight miles of track. That comes out to $15.3 million for the entire project. Now, $15.5 million may sound like a lot of money, right? But I need to remind y'all that building an extra lane on an urban freeway each way costs $4.2 million per mile in a small urban area. The other way that we calculate costs is just to do an itemized budget. You know, we estimate the cost of each line item, sum it up, and then that's our budget. First thing, we need a big bad diesel electric locomotive engine. I've seen direct current diesel electric locomotive engines go for one and a half million dollars, at least from my research online. So we'll assume one and a half million dollars for a V12 diesel electric locomotive engine. Second thing we're going to need to do is buy some cars, right? We've got to transport our passengers from, from Gay Street all the way out to West Town. In order to do that, we're going to say each car is $250,000. We're going to buy six cars. That's another one and a half million dollars, meaning our entire train set costs us $3 million. The next thing we're going to need to do is build some stations. I have no idea how much it costs to build a station. I know how much it costs to build a 3,000 square foot house. That's about half a million dollars. But we will assume that each station has all the electronics and computers and all that extra uh, electronic architecture to do ticketing. That will bump our costs up to $1 million per station. Since we're putting three stations on our tracks, one downtown, one in Bearden, and one by West Town, that will bring our total cost to $3 million for the stations. Add that to the cost of the train set, now we are at $6 million. So the last thing that we need to do is hire some people to navigate the red tape and regulatory BS that we've created for ourselves in the United States. Paying a bureaucrat is not cheap, but uh, I mean, I worked a job like that um, for about a year. We'll just assume that the salary, we'll pay three guys $100,000 a year for three years, um, and then add an extra $100,000 in for, for bonuses and benefits and all that jazz. And that'll take our total estimated cost for bureaucrat labor to $1 million, which makes our total cost $7 million. Yeah, $7 million is kind of a lot of money, but it's about half what our cost per mile was going off of Nashville's Music City Star extrapolation. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. Generally, things take about twice as much as you initially thought they were going to. So that $14 million, that $15.3 million figure is probably a good estimate. Our next question is, where do we go from here? How can this system be expanded and how much will that cost? So the system could further be expanded by going from West Town all the way to Ebenezer Road. That's an extra two miles of rail, so that would be between $3.8 and $4 million, going with our initial estimate. Additionally, the system could be expanded to 18 miles to Maryville, like Joe Holtquist was initially talking about. That would come in somewhere between 30 and $40 million by the time it was all said and done. 
That's a ton of money, but I think it's well worth it. Luckily for us, there is money to pay for all this now. Not from the local government, not from the state government, but from the federal government. The infrastructure bill that passed into law, it appropriates $50 million each year to enhancement and improvement of current rail projects already on the books, already laid down. There's tons of money available sloshing around at the federal level. Funding this on a local level is, is not an issue. If Tennessee doesn't grab this money, if Knoxville doesn't grab this money, it'll go to a different town or a different state. If funding isn't an issue, I think it's just a matter of spreading the idea. I really appreciate you watching this. If you think this is a good idea, please share it with your friends. If you don't think this is a good idea, let me know in the comments section. Either way, I really appreciate you watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.